Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are working on this train unit. It's about uh, six, seven years old. And we're doing the preventive maintenance. And uh, we come out here every year. <clears throat> but I just wanna show you what you can expect when you have a bad thermal expansion valve that's starting to act up, okay? So let me show you here. I got my digital gauges on there. And uh, you can see suction, liquid line, uh, superheat, subcooling, right? So I'll turn the flash off. So the temperature splits about 24, wet bulbs about 54 or 59. So that's kind of a red flag. When you see a thermal expansion valve that has superheat above, 20 really you should look further into it so I pulled out the chart <clears throat> and you can see here it's about 70 degrees out here so you kind of go up the 70 right and then you kind of go up there and then you're up to the left so my pressure should be about eh, 275 which that part is normal but check out the suction it's about 70 uh, degrees again outdoors so there 70s right there and then you go up and then you go to the left it's about 59 wet bulbs it's pretty dry out so 105 to 110 and you can see there our suction is much lower than that it's not the airflow this thing has had plenty of return um, filter is nice and clean it's brand new and get this the subcooling is higher than normal okay so what does that mean <clears throat> well it means that the thermal expansion valve inside of this coil in there is starting to st starve or restrict the flow of the refrigerant more than it should. Why? How do you confirm that? Well, suction is lower, right? Meaning it's not letting enough uh, refrigerant into the indoor coil. And the liquid line is normal, but the subcooling is a little high, meaning you have a little bit too much refrigerant in the liquid line right before it enters the, uh, the TXV, the expansion valve. So, I just wanted to show you how you diagnose that. I know a lot of people ask me that question, is how do you diagnose a bad expansion valve? Well, there it is. You have to confirm it with a couple things. For one, you need to use a chart that came with the manufacturer. So here it is, right? This is saying that my discharge was okay, but my suction was way too low. If then we came over here and we saw that Subcooling should be 10 plus or minus, you know, three. That's not, that's okay, you know, that's, that wasn't too bad. Like 13, we're on the higher end. But the dead giveaway was the um, suction side is way too low and the superheat is too high. So that means that TXV is restricting the refrigerant right before it enters the indoor coil. So I will do um, a video after to show you with the right pressures and with the new TXV how that definitely equalizes afterward, okay? All right, thank you for watching. Okay, so I did not return to that job to replace the TXV, but my brother did, and he is also a technician, obviously, and I just had him send me a picture of all his readings when he was done, and this is what he sent me. So if you can see here, our suction pressure was dead on, superheat was good, the subcooling was dead on, uh, temperature split was good. 
So this is proof that, um, you know, the diagnosis was correct and that you can also trust taking that same route and that same, those same steps to figure out if you have a bad TXV. Uh, even though, or real quick, what can that scenario cause? Well, uh, what was going on is that that scenario was starving the compressor, which means it was not going to lubricate it correctly, so that will cause the compressor to fail early. Okay, so that's that's why it was so important to change that out um, before it... Uh, it got any worse and a lot of people won't even notice it because the temperature split was it was still blowing ice cold right it was still blowing 23 degree split it was blowing ice cold but that doesn't change the fact that it was going to destroy that compressor okay so it's better just to do it uh before that happens okay well thank you for watching